Hello again! Welcome back. As usual, this is Becca going by Nightcat or Nightcat's Meow Win Online. And welcome back for another week looking at Linden scripting language. Now, as I promised last week, I would show you how to read information from a note card because that's how I integrate things in with my multi location greeting and farewell server setup. So, we're going to go ahead and go over that this week. So, to just build a basic note card reader just to learn how this function works, you can, as so often we do, start with your dear friend, the Mark One Cube. Hello, Cube. We meet again. And you're also, because of the nature of what we're doing, going to need yourself a note card. So you can just right click any folder, get a new note card. I seem to have a little something going on here. Give me just a moment. Could do with fixing that up at some point so it doesn't spam me. But for right now... Alright. Later I will fix whatever is wrong with that. If you change your, the name of your note card that we're doing for this task to simply note card, drop it in the same object. What we're going to have to work with are a command for get note card line and then processing it through a data server. So we first pull up the syntax for get note card line, which requires keep forgetting this is not on my regular screen, but it's just a part of SL. Control C. Control V. So at touch start, it would proceed to get a note card line. And this starts with a string name and an integer line. We already know what the note card is going to be called for this particular instance, which is note card. And we'll start with the beginning at line zero. This is just a good way to get this checked out and tested. Now, the wiki entry for get note card line gives you an example of data server and of note card query ID. This is actually the most important part. It turns it into a key. Almost forgot about that part. So in order to process that through, you need to have a variable for it. And I've been spending too much time working in Visual Basic. You need to remember to love your semicolons. <sighs> it's silly of me to forget that kind of thing, but then you'll set up a data server function. It really only needs two variables, string what, I'm sorry, key, what, and string, theta. Everything else is just going to be processed with these. So, 
what you actually do. Because when get note card line is called, it will create a key for a data server. Part of the reason for maintaining this is just a simple comparison. It's useful in the case that you have multiple things that can talk to a data server. Not a thing we're going to do very often, but it is always good to check this. So if that is exactly equal to what, then say on zero data. And we'll do a little more with this in a minute, make this more capable. But that should give you a good start. Yep, it responds with this is a test, which as we see is the very first line here. In this case though, there are more lines. So we're going to create a simple for loop up here that will constant a simple loop that will constantly feed it back. The best way to do that, because you want to be able to read for end of line, is to take that out of touch start, make it a function read. And then we're going to start with calling read here. If what does not equal end of file, that is a constant in the language. It means we're at the end of the note card. It will read the data. Oh yes, we are also going to want a placeholder for the number, and that will be integer line equals zero. Line, line equals line plus one, and read. What this will mean is anytime that what comes out is not the end of file. It's going to say what it is, move to the next line, and tell it to read all over again. And actually, I got that a little bit wrong. Putting the key in there instead of the output. There you go. This is a test. This is only a test. If this is an actual note card, oh wait, it is. Never mind. Test successful. That is just a very simple example of reading from a note card. Now, in order to integrate this into a wider system, what we'd want to do is go through and tell it which note card to read. So, if we were to do that, There we go, just a snarky little second note card. Another note. Drop that in there. Pop the code open again. And let's give it a second method of receiving information. Got it. 
But since we're going to have more than one option, we have to have different choices for there. So it is string note So if we're going to call read, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set note equals note card and another note. I had to remember what those were called. What we just did there is that when it's started, it automatically sets note to basically nothing. When it's finished, it automatically sets note to nothing. If you touch start, it will set it to read note, note card. Whereas if you collide, It will give you note, another note. So this way we're now filtering based on how it's triggered. That is the same thing we scanned before. Ah, it seems I did something wrong with collision start. Here to be anything wrong with that. Making sure I have this exactly the same with a quick copy and paste. Save. There it goes. The test succeeded. This is the test again. This is only a deja vu. So there you have it how to create a system that can read the content of a note card and actually filter which note card you're reading based on the criteria you need. Next week, we'll take what we've just covered here, put it all together, and show you how to make a more expansive greeter system. This can also, as you see, be used to handle objects that are interacted in different ways that need to give specific information. You could actually have this set for any particular type of call to your server that we covered last week to give you back variant information. So that's it for this week. I hope you all have enjoyed yourselves. As usual, this has been Becca going by Netcat or Netcat's Meow when online. And I've seen a few more comments cropping up. I really appreciate those. Those really do a lot of good for keeping me motivated. It, it reminds me that there's those of you out there that this is really helping to learn to code. And I'm really hoping that when I'm, this has run its course, that you all will stick around when I pick this up for a different programming language. Linux scripting language really taught me to code initially. When I turned around and went to school for it, I found so much of the hard work of learning how to understand the, the structure of a program and how the logic worked and all of that. I'd gotten so much of the hard work out of the way before I went to school for it that getting my degree was surprisingly easy by comparison. So I'm really hoping that for other people, Linden Scripting Language can be a bridge to other programming. So keep the comments coming. Anybody that has specific questions or specific things they want me to show you that you want me to show you how to make, go ahead and leave comments. I do read them. I do pay attention to them. They do matter. As you go through the videos, you've seen some of them are specifically a response to viewer requests. So keep them coming. 
And as usual, I'll have these out usually Tuesday by noon Eastern Standard Time. So until then, good luck, good day, and happy coding.